Good morning, freshmen. Still Easter season, so that's exciting. Hopefully, now that it's Easter season, we're done with snow. That would be awesome. We could get on to springtime. But enough about the weather. We didn't tune in here for a weather report. I'm going to go back to some more symbols for the Blessed Trinity. Sometimes we can find reflections of God in nature. And this is one case that can try and help us um, comprehend the idea that something can be more than what it seems, <clears throat> excuse me, in more than one way. For example, H2O is always the same. If you don't have 2H and an O, you do not get water. So always the chemical composition is the same. However, it can exist in three different states, right? It can be a gas, it can be a liquid, it can be a solid. It can't be all three at the same time. It's one or the other. So the, the um, states of matter are distinct, but always the same substance, always the same H2O. Another example that we can see in nature is an object like the sun. There is a physical object, and it's one same physical object. There isn't one sun that gives us light, and a different sun that gives us heat, and a different sun that creates the gravitational pull on the Earth. It's one sun. It's one sun. And so even though it has all these different functions that impact us, it's still one object. One object that creates gravity, creates heat, creates light. By its very existence, those things exist because of how those um, gases in the sun are constantly reacting and it's constantly creating these things. <clears throat> now, God would be eternal, of course, and our sun is finite. Not that it's going to run out in my lifetime or yours, but suns do right, run out, stars do um, grow cold, so to speak. So this is a physical example, something that can help us move towards an understanding, but it's not going to be the same as the Trinity. It's just a way to think about how something can have the same substance and be different, how something can have the same substance and have different function. And here's another way you can think about it. You are one person. You are one person who relates differently in your different relationships. You're in relationship with different people, a mom, a dad, you know, extended family. You have friends. You have people who share your interest. You maybe are dating. You certainly are in a relationship at school. And those relationships are different and they look different. And you maybe are more or less your full self in one relationship over another relationship. So you don't change, though. That capacity that you have to be a good girlfriend or a good boyfriend, someday a good husband or wife, a good mother or father, that capacity is already there. Who you are as a son or daughter that's who you are also. And you have the capacity to be that person later in life too, in your relationships. Now we're human and we work on ourselves. We help ourselves be our better person. We want whoever the best uh, of what we can be, who we can be to be seen by other people. God, of course, is his best. He's not going to change from relationship to relationship. But this can help us understand that there can be dis different aspects of us, different aspects of our personality that shine through in our different relationships. The church uses this language then to talk about the Blessed Trinity. These are the terms they teach with. Substance. So everything has a substance or an essence. Um, if I say pencil to you, immediately a picture of a pencil comes to mind. 
you either thought of that, uh, you know, yellow number two that we all know and love, or you thought of your mechanical pencil with the eraser that wore down too quick and is useless now, or you thought of um, maybe those big fat pencils you might have used when you were a preschooler, but some picture of a pencil comes to mind, the essence of a pencil. And so everything has its essence. You are you, and no one else can be you. You have your essence. And just like that, God has his essence or substance, and his is divine. His is the holy um, godness of him. And so nothing else has that substance but God. And through that substance, all creation exists. Hmm. And we refer to it in our creed, the creed we say at Mass. And we use this word, consubstance, consubstantial. So with the same substance. We say that Jesus is consubstantial with the Father. He is the same substance as the Father. The Holy Spirit is the same substance. How could God be anything but what God is? You're human. And try as you like, you could not become something else. You're human. And that part, that part of that essence of you that is human can never, ever be changed. God's substance can never be changed. The next term the church works with is three distinct persons. So you know them by uh, names given in scripture, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So we mentioned that when we talked about the shield last week. The, so the shield shows us that they are in relationship with each other, the next point, but each is distinct. Each was their own like point on that triangle. Each person, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, is separate. They each have their own function um, or relationship with us. Just like the the same sun does different things, heat, warmth, light. So Father, Son, and Holy Spirit interact with humanity and, and in fact, all creation differently. They're different people, right? Different persons. Of course, they would relate with us differently. You relate differently, right? With the people that you're with. That was the previous slide. And then lastly, they're in relationship with each other. So I don't think it's an accident that Jesus used the term father and called himself son. He was describing a relationship that we know well. They're both God, but he wanted us to understand there was relationship. And we understand relationships. That's a part of our human language. So they're in relationship with each other. It isn't about how they relate to us. That's more about the the second bullet point, the distinct persons. This is about the fact that they relate with each other. Um, that the Father, and Son, and Holy Spirit, you know, love each other eternally in that relationship, and then that love overflows into creation and into humanity. So, of three terms, substance, person, and relationship. And that's going to lead you into um, questions for today and reading in the book. This is a blend in chapter four leading into chapter five. And when you finish today with the Trinity, you'll do intro reading for the um, section on the Holy Spirit uh, in a Socrative tomorrow. It will be on from 9 to 2 p.m. Um, be sure you tell someone so they don't mess up and miss the day. So 9 to 2 tomorrow, a Socratic will be running. So you'll need the book. It's in chapter uh, 4 and 5 on the Holy Spirit. All right, then. Have a great day. Uh, say prayers at some point. Give thanks for the food on your table and the people who made that happen for you. Um, be safe, right? Be safe and take care of yourself. Um, until we are free to roam about our world again. Blessings.